season. So our sun sign just changed as well too. Oh, that's that's true. I forgot to throw that in there. Yeah. So last week I was in a car accident um, and I drive a very funky old Jeep. Jeep. Um, I'm a home health therapist. So I go into people's homes and provide therapy. And so I drive all the time. And on the way to a patient's house, somebody, four cars, I was in the front. And um, I just bounced forward, some body aches and stuff, but nothing, no airbag or anything like that. And um, my tire, I have a tire in the back of my Jeep. It uh, left an imprint on the person who hit me, broke their grill, pushed up their, their hood and did not do anything to my vehicle. It just bounced off of my vehicle. And so I was like, okay, I'm a little shook up, but mm. not bad. I'm, I, I'm driving away. I'm canceling my patience. Do something. Thank you. I love it. Oh my goodness. So, um, Oh, thank you. Yes, I am okay. I'm, I'm actually a little, I was a little sore, um, but it wasn't, uh, that's mm -hmm. why I was like, okay, this is, this is, it's just weird shit going down. And so mm -hmm. I, I, um, I just felt, that. And, and it was in that moment of, in this accident, I was like, there's stuff going down that's bigger than me. Mm -hmm. so, there is, um, there is. And I was very lucky. I wasn't injured. No one, no one, Everybody's a bit sore, but no one was hurt. And the last person, of course, took off because people are assholes. Um, his fault. The one who started it drove away. Um, so, greetings, everyone. Um, I am Tanya O'Grady or Professor Mystic. I answer to both. Um, OG mama is what my kids and their friends call me. I answer to that as well. Um, and if it's anything else, then I probably won't answer. Um, so today, um, we will go through our call over like we do every week where we go over, um, those things that need to be for those who are new and for those who are um, just to always remind us um, the, the three C's and then the awakening of the hands. Um, and um, I had a couple ideas that I wanted to start with um, is also, so there is another um, crystal class that's being offered by Divination Academy. Um, and it will be by a different professor. It is not by me. And it'll have a very different um, frequency and um, how it's handled will be different. So uh, what I do not want from people who have worked with me is to go there and say, Tanya said, um, because if I find out, I'll find you. <laughs> and we know that that's not how, it's not how crystals work. So um, if you say, Tanya said, this is what Carnelian does, um, then that may be a factor, that may be true, but please don't do that. Um, I think that it's, that uh, Professor Katrina is gonna be handling it in a very different way. Um, she will be, I believe she'll be going into some of the lattice work, which we will not be going into late, until later on. And the more that you're exposed to the lattice work, the better, because it actually has an impact on crystals and on the crystals that you use for readings or healings or self-healings or self-energy. Um, so the more you know, the better. But my last series, I started with the lattice work and I think everybody didn't have any anything to hold that on. Like that information was just sort of abstract. And so that's why I wanted to start this time with the um, energy centers and the electrical body and trying to get us used to doing that and then moving into other things. I'll get to that in a minute. Our three Cs, choosing a crystal, 
uh, there are lots of ways. You can go to a rock shop. You can go to a, um, uh, you can look online and go to Etsy. You can ask people what, what um, stores they go to and what stores that they like. Um, and when you're looking, you can also pop up, you can just search crystals. And then if something catches you, you can find out what it is and get that. Um, uh, Susan, who's uh, a person who's off here on here often, um, mentioned unicorn storms, um, not unicorn, the Phoenix stone. And um, I have a big Phoenix on my arm and I, I love Phoenixes and the idea of it. And then promptly went and bought some because someone mentioned it and it's sort of something to me went, ooh. So um, that's that's choosing. We've talked about it before, but that's choosing. Um, whenever you get a stone, um, please make sure that you clean it. Uh, I do not um, use water because I don't want to remember all the stones that can't be wet. Um, I do know that if a stone is very polished, you can probably get it wet quickly. And it won't, with the exception of, of, of satin spar selenite, um, it probably won't damage it, but it could if it's like malachite or other ones that have iron in it, it might have a crack in it and the water can get in and cause problems. But it usually, you, if, if you are in a pinch, you can use water. Um, as I hold this really big peach moonstone, um, which is all feminine water. So, um that and then so that's water smoke you can use burning incense you can use however you clean your house you can use charcoal resins <clears throat> um you can use jasmine incense from the whole foods <laughs> whatever whatever works for you a lot of the cleansing a lot of it is the fact that you're intending to clean it so much of work that we do with crystals is to do with intention. It's to do with, with what we are programming in us to then request from the stone. So, um, and then sound, I remembered to bring my pretty little singing bowl. Ta -da! And many times, um, let me grab a little stone here. Um, so, I'm going to do it without it and I do it with it so you can hear the differences. So um, this is a Tibetan singing bowl. And if you hear it goes out smoothly. So then these are for smaller stones or bigger stones, bigger stones next to it. Um, and Well, it rang out pretty good. Usually, <laughs> usually when you put in a stone that needs to be cleaned, um, it it sort of shortens that that longer sound. And then you hit it a couple times, and um, then you will you'll hear that you'll hear it. You'll know. Um, there is uh, what am I forgetting? Um, there is breath which um, works for some people. I think it probably works better for air signs than water signs. I'm a fire sign and I find it, it's a challenge for me, but you can, with intention in your mind, you can tell the stone that you're gonna clean it and then find your center. And then you can blow out the connections that it has in it. And that would be providing a steady breath with the intentions of getting rid of all of those connections. Those connections go from when it was taken from the earth to the fact to wherever it was broken down or carved or whatever, to then, you know, the, the seller, to the post office. It goes through all of those have an impact because stones pick up things. Um, and so that you would then hold a breath. May take a couple, just get a feel for it. 
This one did not take a couple. Um, I'm not great at it, but it's a good thing to practice. I've practiced and I've gotten better. Um, and then you can put it in the earth. I, I don't bury my stones just because then I am struggling to get the earth off of them um, unless they're, I haven't buried them, but it's not, but it's, you can, and then you can just take a makeup brush and you can brush the, the dirt off of it that way. Um, and then um, obviously moon cleans and charges. Um, full moon is when it pulls up the most, so it pulls out the most and then it puts in the most, but you can, you can put out stones at any time. The three days of the full moon are, are, you know, it's the strongest, the tides are the highest, it has the most impact, but it is, and if you can't get them outside and you only have a windowsill or even your altar, it's fine because that sound comes through um that's not that sound that that energy um could you bury them in a bag oh that's a really good idea i never thought about that yeah i don't know about a box but i would think like a bag that would be a really good idea actually i hadn't thought about it um i've always <clears throat> it is so that's and then um and it's true for sunlight sunlight just a couple hours um some stones are uh, sensitive to sunlight, fluorite, um, even amethyst and, and rose quartz can fade uh, if it gets a lot of sunlight. I'm in Colorado, so we have a lot of sun. And um, I use, if I use sunlight, it's most of the time for charging. Then the, then the next part of it, of the, so that's the cleaning, choosing cleaning, and now we're charging. We're taking a stone, a stone that we want to um, be able to mm -hmm. help us. It can be, um, it can be a stone that we may not know a lot about, but is attractive to us. It could be a stone that we know a lot about, and we're looking for something very specific. So, in charging that, you can charge it with the moonlight. You can charge it with the sunlight. You can also, when you've activated your hands, however you do that, clapping them, getting them warm, bringing their focus into that um, energy center that's in the palm. And then you can put the, the stone, I'm using a little um, sunstone tower, and put that in your, in your palm. And then with intention, you can ask for whatever specific qualities that you need or to just if that stone if you don't you don't know why you need that stone and you don't know what it what it is about that it provide to you what you need what is needed from you at that point so aren't you, aren't you supposed to uh program it uh, am i what Aren't you supposed to program it after you cleanse it? Charging and pro I'm I'm using charging as a um I was using charging as the same thing as programming. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So you're, you're it's okay. You're charging it up. You're programming it with what you want it to. Your intention is going into the stone. The reason okay. I, I I call it charging is so that we have the three C's so everybody always remembers those three C's. So charging is the, is programming is the same. Yeah, I use it as the same thing, but thank you for clarifying that. I'll make sure that going forward that I clarify that. So yes, it is an intention. It is a program. It is charging it up for what you need. Um, absolutely, you can, you should absolutely clean your pendulum. I'm not sure if this person's asking if you want to clean your pendulum or if you want to, um, absolutely, you should clean your pendulum. If you, and if you've done a lot of work with it, um, you should put it in a um, selenite. I know it's satin spar, um, but I'm going to call it selenite. Um, you can put it in your selenite bowl. That's the other one I forgot. Um, just pop it in there for a couple of days. If it's been, or if you use it a lot, 
then put it in there for a couple hours, ask it to be cleaned. And then when you hold it again, it should feel more responsive. Um, pendulums are responsive to you. So it should be, you know, you hold your thing and, and, and it'll go, it would be more activated. So. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Michelle. Hello. Hello. I was the one that said that uh, asked you about uh, programming it, but I also want to uh, bring attention to uh, somebody asked you about cleansing their pendulum. Um, they should also um, cleanse uh, their tarot cards or oracle cards too. Absolutely. Um, any anything that you're doing divination with people. But, and especially if you're doing them with other people, not just your yourself as well, but not just your but not just yourself, you should always cleanse those things, just like you should cleanse your house electrically. All of these things uh, don't dump your house full of water, but you can use a you can use a spray, you can use incense, you can use you know you can clap your hands to disturb the things that the electrical cobwebs that have sort of gotten into your home and then to help disperse them and then crack a window, make sure it all gets out. Um, and then, um, then put incense, intent, again, intention, what you want, charging your home up, programming it, intention in your house and what you want. For me personally, when I'm cleaning, I go counterclockwise. And then when I'm cleaning and then I'm incensing after, I go clockwise to draw in the best that's available for the home. So these are just the beginning things. Um, and I think, Michelle, I think you're new. Is it Michelle? I, yes. Uh, so I take questions at the end mostly. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so oh, sorry. Oh, don't be, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. I didn't say it at the beginning. Um, it is just because it helps with the flow, and um, then so when someone watches the recording, it it has a good flow going through it. Oh, uh, so, I'm I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. Please don't be sorry. I didn't I didn't say anything, and you didn't know. Um, I'm getting better at answering questions on text, but I'm still not. I'm not all the way there. So if you put a question in there, we'll get to it after the class. Okay? Okay. Um, so today, and then the other thing, this is not something I've brought up before, but I was thinking about, um, oh, I forgot my analogy. So I have this analogy that I use for crystals and it's like perfume. When you smell a perfume, you smell it in the in the bottle and it smells one way. Then you spray it on yourself and it smells a little different because it's mixing with your your pheromones, your your oils, your body. And then someone else sprays it on them and it smells completely different. And that's very much like crystals. So sometimes crystals can work it wonders for one person in one area and you try it and it doesn't quite work like that. So it is, a lot of it is trusting your gut and trusting your instinct. Um, but that's my my saying is always like, it's like perfume, it changes. Um, so I was thinking about, uh, this was my little epiphany before class that I wanted to start on. I was thinking about how we gather um, as we go along, we're gathering, we're gathering knowledge, we're gathering um, different kinds of information. And it is about, you know, that is sort of part of that is utilizing it. But, but the most important part is when you apply it to yourself, and then you start to do the work for yourself. And crystals can help you feel things and see things and call things up and help with that but then you still have to do the work <laughs> which which we all know we have to do the work but it does it does help so today we are going to um talk about the sacral 
energy center slash chakra. Um, and last week we talked about the root and that being the grounding um, and that being in terms of like Maslow's um, hierarchy of needs, that that's the bottom line, safety, stability. So with this, the sacral is when the work starts is, yes, we have trauma that happens to us um, in, in the root. But most of the most of the stuff that we need, the shadow work that we do starts in the sacral. And it is a um, it's a so that's where the when we're going in depth internally, it is with the sacral, it's with that energy center. Now, um, and I know I've, I think I said this last week. So we have three in the, we have three physical base at the bottom. We've got the heart in the middle and then we've got the higher three. So when I say something's a higher vibration, it doesn't make another stone a lower vibration. It just makes it more earthy as opposed to a higher frequency. Uh, high notes in, in, in music are higher frequency. Low notes are lower there, but it doesn't make them any better or worse. It's just, it's just a, it's a range. Um, so I just wanted to, to put that in there. So with the sacral energy center, it comes with the core of creativity. It starts where emotional intelligence starts. It is where, um, adaptability and one's internal depth starts to grow it is a it is a water influenced energy center whereas the root is earth which makes sense this is water so this is where things the flow of things happen and then it can flow up the the spine up the energy centers so this is this is where um, sexual energy comes from, passion, uh, creativity, and uh, in my work, I I work with um, pretty much geriatric population, and one of the things that happens is they stop doing the things that they love. They don't they they've lost that connection, and so this is where we we really feel those things that we love, whether it's reading or um, gardening or walking in nature or napping, whatever it is that, that, that lights us up and makes us happy, this is where we start. It doesn't mean that, you know, it may be that you um, really wanna work on your crown and that's, but it's still gonna start down here the root the foundation of the house this is where the framing the walls are starting to get built some how you want it to let the layout of how you want it to be um that's why when i talk about um this is where shadow work usually begins yes there are some things that we have to deal with from the root um if you were uh, if certain things happen in childhood that you need to address, that would be coming from there. But this is where um, most of our emotional trauma are our things that have caused us to um, mentally not be able to handle things or not be able to... Um, We'll use the the need to be nice. Um, this is where that would start. Um, and as you as you develop and as you move along as a as a human being, you realize that um, I don't need to be nice. I, I need to be kind, and I need to be generous, but I don't need to be. I need to not. I, I can say no. I can't do that. Um, but that that imprint that's in us starts in this center. 
So if you're finding that as you work with your boundaries and you're finding that need to be nice, this is where it's coming from. It's this energy center. It's the digestive. Um, it's the, the sexual organs. It's the, um, I was, I saw something today that was very cool. Um, oh, it's also to do very much with the physical health, like exercise or um, soft tissue. You know, like if you, um, I was doing, I did a little bit of research into Himalayan rock salt because um, I was wondering if it was part of uh, the sacral energy center. And um, it is and it isn't because it's, it, I have a bunch of ones that look orange and don't look pink. Um, and so, but it's really good for muscle tissue. Like if you have worked out too hard or you have uh, strained yourself, I took a bath um, after the accident to be able to allow my muscles to um, start to regenerate. And that this sacral energy center is where that starts. And so um, it is the components then. Um, it's also about uh, the balance of our physical, of our physical body um, and if if we're if we're in our heart, like say we're in our in the green, we're in our heart, and we find that we're out of balance and we're not able to like clear it up at that level. It may need to go. It, you may need to go down to the sacral level to be able to start to clean and change and heal that aspect of things, that emotional imbalance that may be there. Um, and it, it's, it is very connected. Um, I know like I was speaking about the root and it was like, that's the root. This is sacral. It's, it doesn't quite work like that. It's root, sacral, solar plexus. And then there's a shift at the green and then your throat, your third eye, your crown and your cat star. Um, and so it's, it's, that's the balance point, but this is the start of it. Uh, the color, which I didn't say the color, did I? <laughs> I just assumed you all knew the color that goes with it is orange. We started with red and the color that goes with it is orange. So you will see stones, um, as you research, as you, as you go down your crystal journey, you will see stones that um, you think of as being part of the sacral um, energy, and it'll be tied up with the solar plexus, or it'll be it'll be pulled down to the root. So there is this there is this flow between these three that is um, you know very aware, very cog cognizant cognizant. Um, you know, just being able to, that they work together. They work together, a, co a cooperation between them. It's not separate rooms. They're all in one room. One, actually, they're all in one house. Um, so I look, in looking at, um, so at a spiritual level, the sacral is very much where meditation and mindfulness come from. We may we may first notice them in the heart because that's where we notice a lot of things is when we're doing heart work. But this is where it starts. This is the um, this is where affirmations start. Yes, they go all the way up to to the green and then up. But this is where they start. I am worthy. I am creative. I am energized. These are all affirmations that would go with the sacral center. Um, and so I 
I'm just checking, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah, and so it's also, so you've got the green, which is the balance point of the whole rainbow. Um, this is the balance point of your root sacral and your um, solar plexus. This one's the balance between the two. So there's a lot of interchange between the root and the sacral and the sacral and the solar plexus. So when you look at certain stones, one of the stones that is that can be connected to um, the sacral is citrine. I'm not going to go into it today. I usually put, put that with the solar plexus because it is a yellow stone. But it is also, um, if you need that kind of energizing um, punch that comes with citrine, then it might be what's needed for your sacral to be able to move forward. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I today was very much thinking about the deeper aspects of things. <laughs> so I dragged everybody along with me in, in looking at that sort of more spiritual, that sort of more that that deeper aspect as opposed to, you know, here's a piece of citrine and I mean of, of um, carnelian and this is what it can do. Um, I was really thinking about um, the spiritual aspect the that psyche aspect this is this is where our instinct right trust your gut right there right there it's a phrase that you can use with anybody trust you know i trust your <laughs> i can't imagine saying trust your sacral energy center i i think that would come across a little weird so in this case trust your gut and that's where it starts. So the instinct starts here, um, where you start to feel it. If you are someone who um, has not had a lot of work with the instinct, then this would be a good place to start. Um, so on that area, um, is does anybody have any questions? I'll take questions about this sacral energy center at this time. If you have any questions, just let me know because before I move on to the stones that we're gonna look at for today. Um, I've came across um, that orange calcite and jasper and coral go with the sacral. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Um, so color frequency is a very uh, important factor. Um, one of the things that we're going to look at today, this is orange satin spar slash selenite. And um, it is it is to do with the sacral, even though it has it carries its um, it carries the frequency that goes with all selenite, but it is also carries those things that are helpful with the sacral. So and then orange calcite. Orange calcite, another stone that goes with it. And one stone that goes with it as well is moonstone. Um, <clears throat> this is a this center is a a female. Did I answer your question? Yes, but oh. what was the other name you used for the selenite? Oh, satin spar. So here's here's the deal. Um, satin spar is technically the um is is the the kind of this is satin spar what we usually buy as selenite is actually satin spar it's a kind of selenite when someone talks about selenite what they're talking about is this it's clear but 99 percent of all stores, shops, um, they are talking about satin spar. They're talking about that kind. So it's just, um, someone called me out and I went and did some research and I said, right, this is the, the case. But I use the word selenite because that is what most of us know it as. Okay. And so 
but yeah, satin spar is clear. Has still has some of the fibrous aspects to it, but um, it's clear. Carrie has a really beautiful satin uh, selenite plate um, that when I go see her, I'm taking home with me. Um, <laughs> so that's <laughs> that, that, that's selenite. Um, and then this is satin spar. So that's why I'm using them interchangeably because most of us think of, of this as selenite. And they have the same qualities. It is not like, um, you know, like some jasper, sorry, my thing is, um, some jaspers can have a very different frequency between them. Yes, they're all jasper, um, but they can have a really different feel. Same with agate. Agate's like this big coverall. And then you get a you get a um, piece of uh, floral uh, floral agate, and then it feels completely different than a piece of agate raw moss agate. There are similarities, but they actually have a very different feel. If you were to put them in your hands and just sensitize yourself to feeling them they feel very different. So um, with satin spar and with selenite, it's not like that. They're very, very similar. Um, so we are going to look at, so we've gone through, is there any other questions about the, um, the sacral aspect of things? Okay, so we are now gonna look at um, a couple of stones. I uh, went a little crazy and I like got all these stones out and was like, oh, I'm gonna do all of them. And then I'm like, okay, that's not, that's not, that's not what we do. That's not how we do it. So um, we are gonna talk about orange selenite slash satin spar. Um, I'm going to, um, so orange calcite and then one of the stones that's almost always tied to it is carnelian. Um, and so I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about carnelian. Um, actually, we're not gonna talk about calcite. Uh, we're gonna talk about sunstone, sorry, my bad. Those are the three that we're gonna look at, but I wanna talk about moonstone. I mentioned it just a little bit, but it's really, um, it's really a good stone to understand why this connects to this. So. Uh, the sacral center is a is is a it is it's a very much a, the divine feminine in our body. It is very much where that's why all all those things that I was talking about emotions and that that's very much um, to do with where this starts. You can't see my hands. I'm going like this, um, but it is very much where things start. And emotionally moonstone and that it's that goes for black that goes for white and it also goes for pink or peach um and this is my beautiful peach moonstone that i really love um and it is uh, i slept with it last night um and it is very much the soft part of things the moonstone very much connects to that gentle part. Um, yes, it's got the it's got the courage, but it's quiet. And so that's one of the stones that connects with the sacral energy center. And um, it is, uh, yeah. I just wanted to because you'll you'll see that it's tied to it, and it'll be black or peach or um, or just white rainbow, but that's that's where it starts is in that in that place. It can have an impact on your um, the rainbow moonstone can have an impact on your crown, and black moonstone can have an impact on your earth star slash root. So they still tie to things, but as as a coverall, moonstone is connected to the sacral 
um, center. And um, so I just wanted to put that one out there. Now, I was gonna talk about Cornelia. I get, I get my little note so I don't forget anything. So um, we talked about the nice, smooth um, feel of Moonstone. So Carnelian feels quite a bit different. <laughs> it has got more of a um, more of a punch. It's a bit more um, energizing. It is uh, a bit more to do with that in terms of emotionally, it's to do with passion, it's to do with courage and vitality. These are where in the, if you are finding yourself struggling um, and just one thing, a side note is that sexual energy is very much connected to creativity. That it is you you you're utilizing very much the same energy. So um, just just something to know about because I may say talk a lot more about creativity than sexuality, but it is this is where that starts. Um, and so with the creativity. Um, and then I also, so this was my nice big piece of carnelian. And then I just recently got this and I thought it was super cute. Can you see that? Is that clear? And so it, it's a little carnelian pansy, daisy, I don't know, flower. And um, it's amazing. We'll talk about shapes, a, a bit down the road, but it is amazing when things are carved into a certain shape, the difference of the frequency that can come off of it, because this is very, um, this is very dainty in its own, it's big, but it's, it still has a very dainty part to it. And it does not have, this is like, you know, slapping you on the backside of the head to get you moving. This is keep moving and, my, and I'll sustain. <laughs> So, um, so the so in terms of like the physical part with carnelian is very much the muscles, and the um, it is still connected to the gut. Um, if you have a wicked, uh, it's also because it's connected to the sexual organs. If you are having really really bad cramps, um, moonstone's good. Carnelian's really good. Um, if you're suffering PMS and you're trying to take out someone without anybody knowing it, get some get some carnelian and it might might save that person's life. Um, so it's very very good for uh, meant for that menstruation um, PMS and um, if you've got something like endometriosis or something that's excruciating. Um, carnelian is a really good stone um, to assist with other things that you are doing. Because um, this is this is not to take over the other things that you do. This is to add and complement the things that you are already taking. Um, if somebody ever says, "Stop taking your insulin and use this stone," please do not listen to them because that's a really bad idea. So um, with the carnelian, it's it um, it's a warming stone, whereas like moonstone's kind of a bit of a cooler stone. Carnelian's a warming stone. Yes, it's the same center, but if, you're, if your sacral center is tight and is all knotted up, then if it, then a, a carnelian can be really useful because it'll help warm stuff up. If you're um, finding that uh, you're you're holding your stomach because of anxiety or because of of other things, then moonstone is going to be a very good way to apply it um, in that in that territory. Um, spiritually, this is carnelian is 
uh, sort of that start of our. So we've got the root. Everything starts with the root. But this is where this, the, the beginning of the plant that becomes our spirituality, this is where it starts. And um, so that, that, that um, if at all, if you feel stunted in any areas of your life, many times, again, they show up in the green. They show up when you're doing heart work. Um, if you are feeling stunted, this is a really good stone to travel down, to then do some healing, to allow those aspects of your life to have healing um, energy. And this is one of those stones that can be helpful. Um, but it is, it's the, it's the stone that carnelian is one of the stones that can awaken that spirituality. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's carnelian. Um, and it's an energizing stone, man. I'll tell you, if you are tired, if you are fatigued, if you have to work a 12 hour shift and you're thinking, I don't know if I can do this, get a little piece of carnelian, stick it in one of these fabric, fabric, <laughs> fabric things, put it underneath your shirt and go to work because it'll give you that power that you need, that extra punch that you need. And then you'll need citrine to keep you going all day. Um, but it'll it'll give you that boost. Then, so now we're going to go to sunstone. And I love sunstone. I absolutely love sunstone. It is... Um, it's kind of like in between moonstone and carnelian. It does not have the same punch that a carnelian does, but it has a steady, steady at the helm. Mm -hmm. um, someone is not muted. Um, hang on a second. Okay, I think it's all taken care of. Okay, cool. Um, it is, and it comes. It comes in a ray in, in a quite a, a big um, sort of like range because this is this is sunstone, and this is sunstone, and then this darker necklace, this dark darker orange that I'm wearing is also sunstone. So it comes in a pretty big range um, of colors. I haven't, I'm going to be honest, and I haven't really noticed much difference between the different colors, just to be honest, like if it's a lighter or a darker, I haven't noticed a huge difference. Um, carnelian I have, but I haven't noticed that with sunstone. Sunstones are really is where we start um, with our, I think in turn, like our leadership, this is where our leadership qualities start to grow. Sunstone has that aspect to be able to call attention to um, if, if there's lots of great stones that you can use for public speaking, I think sunstone would be a really good stone to have if you are not comfortable public speaking. Um, I would probably combine a couple stones, you know, put some lipidite in there just to keep keep the anxiety down and sunstone. What else would I put in there? I put a green stone, a blue stone for communication. Appetite, maybe. <laughs> um, we will talk more after we've gone through this. The base part of this, we will talk more about combination of stones. Um, it is uh, another one like carnelian. It supports good digestive um, processes. It supports the physical, um, and it's another stone that can really help with um, PMS or pain. Um, it is uh, has more so than carnelian. It has a connection to the um, mentality to our mind. 
And so it has like if you are if your mind is sluggish, um, sunstone can be a very good stone to help get that started. Doesn't mean carnelian won't work, but it's very there's a bigger there's a connection between sunstone and and how our mind works. Um, and I'm thinking about it, and there's lots of um, light colors in it, and I wonder if that white part of it connects to our crown. Just a thought. Hadn't thought about it before, but just a thought because I know that this is a stone that can help um, with mental clarity um, and with being able to um, motivation. So if you need to start something that's going to take some brain power, that's going to take some stuff, it's a great stone to get things started. Um, there are other stones that are good for continuing, but this is a great stone to get things started. Um, I wear it when <clears throat> I am feeling like I need more support um, in, 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 in during the day where I don't, carnelian can be, I find that sunstone works really well for me. Again, crystals are like perfume. Each person will find ones that work really well for them and ones that don't, that are more of a challenge. So sunstone, I love sunstone. Um, it is uh, essence of light. So this is very, very warming. And this has that warming aspect, but it's also light. Like it shines a light on things. So if you find yourself needing to do some core work, some shadow work in the, in your sacral area, then this would be a very good stone to have because it has the warmth to unknot things, but it also has the light to help things to, to see the light, to come to light. And so um, it has that aspect of, of um, helping with trauma. So <clears throat> the reason I'm talking so much about um, coming back down to the sacral in terms of, of core work, this is where trauma is going to really sit. Um, I'm not talking about stuff that happens prenatally or when as a child, but as we grow, we have these different kinds of emotional traumas that cause us um, micro traumas. We talk about microaggressions. So we like little traumas that build up um, and it can be big traumas as well. And um, this is a really good stone to work with if you're starting to address them. Uh, because doing that kind of work, doing shadow work, looking at the things that have stopped us to being able to grow and develop is scary as shit. And it's hard. And and this is just a stone that can help along the way. Um, then I will talk for a few minutes about orange selenite. <clears throat> Again, it's another one of uh, warming, but it's cleaning. Um, not the best analogy. Let me find another analogy. I was not going to give a good analogy. Um, if you are feeling, it's kind of like if you've eaten too much and your stomach's really heavy, this would be a good stone. Not this one, because this one's like so massive. This one would be a good stone to put on your stomach to help lighten it up if you've eaten too much and to help sort of digest and move things through. Um, it's really good for, it has that warming aspect, but it's cooler than both carnelian and sunstone. It has that aspect that goes with selenite, which is very cleansing. Um, but it does the orange, um, the orange selenite satin spar does feel quite different than white. Um, it 
it's another stone that can be useful um, in addressing some of the things that get bound up, that get knotted up in our sacral center. It is, um, it helps unknot those. It helps clean those up. So you've found something that has sat in there. Um, so I'll use myself as an example. I had a recovered memory. Now I'm a therapist and I have always been a bit skeptical about recovered memories <laughs> until it happened to me. And then <laughs> I had a recovered memory and um, I had to do work about it. I had to do work on it because it needed to be, I, because I was ready, you know, recovered memories are they're hidden so that till we can handle them, then they show up when we can handle them. So then we need to do the work. And so um, it started, I thought it would start in the heart. That's where I thought it would start. And it didn't, it started in the sacral center. Um, if you've ever had any kind of assault um, or any kind of, uh, if you've had a relationship that has been, um, that's had aggression in it, um, it's going to start, those, those seeds are going to start in your sacral center. And so it is um, where you need to go as you deal with these kinds of things. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm so heavy today. I'm kind of heavy today. Hit, hitting, throwing punches, boom. Um, so that's, that is um, the selenite is a good stone for cleaning. Um, again, the sacral um, center is, as you do your shadow work, most of the time we start in the green, we start with our heart, we start because of heartbreak or because we want to heal our heart. And then it is pulls down and it ends up coming through the sacral, through the solar plexus and then into the heart where it can be cleaned out completely. But it does usually start many times, not usually, many times it starts in the sacral. Uh, the new message, hang on. Uh, Oh, I can't, oh, uh, I need to hear exactly what you're saying. Am I hard to hear? That it needed to be said, like, like, I needed to hear this today is what the message is saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is where that work starts. It is, um, All this work, and I don't know why it's, maybe it's what you needed, this may be what's needed with wherever things are at, but all personal work um, is for us so that we can keep growing spiritually, keep developing as a human. And it is like what I said before, where you get, you, you, you get the knowledge, you utilize the knowledge, but the key point is applying it. You can have as much knowledge as you as much knowledge as you want, but you have to be able to apply it. And so I hope with these stones that I've talked about today that you feel like you can apply them, that you can undo some of those knots that um, happen from life. Um, it doesn't mean, yeah, it's like that. We all have them. Um, I talk a lot with my patients about grief. And um, again, this is where it would start. Uh, and this would be where it is, um, where you would start to address it. And then it would go up to the, then it would move its way up to the heart. So, um, yeah, so that's, 
that's what I've got for today. Um, it's been a little bit heavier than what we normally, how I normally run. Does anybody, um, so I'm going to turn off the recording and then we can go into more questions if people have questions more in depth. And then, honey, we can talk about um, what, what you wanted to talk about, okay? So I'm going to stop the recording. And thank you all for being here today. And 